Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If this is your first time watching the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. Sound speed, camera's rolling, and action! In 1989, Walt Disney World opened its third theme park at the resort. Disney MGM Studios. The park was designed to be a working film studio in addition to the theme park. Now MGM's affiliation with Disney was solely for Disney to use the MGM name and line logo in marketing, and separate contracts allowed specific MGM content to be used in the great movie ride. As you walk down Hollywood Boulevard at the park, you can't help but notice what's an exact full-scale replica of the Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Disney wasn't able to secure licensing rights to use the Grauman's name, so the theater is simply referred to as the Chinese Theater. The Chinese Theater is home to the Great Movie Ride, which was one of the two original rides that opened with the park on May 1st, 1989, the other being the Backlot Tour. With a ride time of approximately 22 minutes, the Great Movie Ride ride takes riders through iconic scenes from 12 classic films in motion picture history, using animatronic figures, live actors, special effects, and projections. At the D23 Expo in July of 2017, it was announced that the Great Movie Ride would close on August 13th, 2017, to make way for the first ever ride based on Mickey Mouse, called Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. So today, we're gonna pay tribute to a great classic Disney ride that is surely gonna be missed at Disney Hollywood Studios. So here are the top 10 great movie rides, secrets, and facts. Number 10, Original Concepts. The Great Movie Ride wasn't always intended to be an attraction at the formerly named Disney MGM Studios. It was actually meant for Epcot. When Michael Eisner was appointed CEO of the Walt Disney Company in 1984, he became very involved with Imagineering. He was presented with an idea for a Hollywood studio-themed entertainment pavilion in Future World at Epcot. The pavilion was to feature an attraction called Great Moments at the Movies, which would take riders on a movie magic journey. Sounds kind of familiar, huh? The pavilion just kept growing into a grander idea until it became so big that it was able to be its own theme park. It should also be noted that in 1982, Michael Eisner, who at the time was the CEO of Paramount Studios, was approached by Universal to join the theme park project in Orlando, but Eisner declined. While Eisner stepped into the CEO position at Disney in 1984, the Universal Studios project was in the back of his mind. When he saw the ideas for the movie pavilion at Epcot grow larger and larger, this really pushed him to slap together an entire studio theme park to rival the Universal project in Orlando. And just like that, the great movie ride found its home in Disney MGM Studios. Number 9. Hollywood Handprints Like we said earlier, the Chinese theater is home of the great movie ride, and it's an exact replica of what you would see in Hollywood, California, right down to celebrity foot and handprints in the cement of the theater's courtyard. From 1989 to 1995, Disney MGM Studios would hold handprint ceremonies for celebrities to leave their mark in the pavement. Now every celebrity whose handprints can be seen at Disney Hollywood Studios can also be seen in Hollywood, California, except for one person, Audrey Hepburn. So she attended a press preview of the park in April of 1989, and when she was creating her handprints, she began to cry. She was getting so emotional, she said, because no one had ever asked for her handprints before, ever. Grauman's Chinese Theater got wind of what happened and tried to invite Audrey to leave her prints in Hollywood, but she declined. Now, Disney Hollywood Studios is the only home of authentic Audrey Hepburn handprints, and this one-of-a-kind piece of film history lives right in the park. Number 8. The Footlight Parade This is the Great Movie Ride Show Building and the track layout covers all 95,000 square feet of the building. As the ride begins, you travel out of the load area, under the neon lighted marquee, and into the movie musical segment. The first scene the ride vehicle pulls up to is the Footlight Parade, a 1933 film. Now the Footlight Parade scene on opening day was much different than what riders came to know it as. When the attraction first opened, the five-tiered cake could be seen rotating with spraying water jets, replicating the scene from the film. It was all out in the open with an array of lights dazzling the scene. A year after the attraction opened, 
the scene started to experience some problems. The mechanical rotating platforms kept breaking down, and the plumbing from the water features on the cake would cause the ride path to constantly flood. Park management thought it would be less problematic if they discontinued the rotating cake and water features. So, the cake became permanently stationary around 1992, and they would add a scrim in front to help disguise that it wasn't moving. Seeing as how this was the first show scene the ride vehicle pulled into, the original incarnation was much grander than the bland, non-rotating scrim scene we were stuck with. Number 7. Seal of Approval After the footlight parade scene, the ride vehicle continues into the world of movie musicals, and you see the famous dancer Gene Kelly featured in his most iconic role as Don Lockwood in Singin' in the Rain. Now, Disney had acquired licensing rights from MGM to have some of its film properties represented in the ride. However, using the likeness of famous actors also required licenses from the celebrities or their estates. Apparently, the Imagineers wined and dined Gene Kelly before showing him his audio animatronic. As soon as he saw the figure, he signed off immediately, and it was shipped off to Florida. Every other actor represented in the ride had to give approval before the ride could make its official debut. If an actor had passed away, then a representative from the family would make the call. But not everyone approved right away. The family of late actor James Cagney was not happy with what he was originally wearing in the gangster scene from Public Enemy. So, the family donated Cagney's actual tuxedo so he would appear more classy. Number 6. Show A and Show B after you pass Mary Poppins and Bert, the ride vehicle heads into what's called the Underworld. And this is where your experience might be different from other guests. Now the Great Movie Ride has two different versions known as Show A and Show B. Or you can call Show A the cowboy scene and Show B the gangster scene. A majority of people though would probably only remember the Great Movie Ride having the gangster shootout, since Show B was most commonly used. Show A takes place in a Wild West bank robbery, with the ride vehicle getting taken over by a bandit, and some really cool pyro of a bank catching fire. Now when the park isn't busy, only the gangster Show B runs, and you'd know this because there's only one set of vehicles on the loading dock. If there's two sets of vehicles on the loading dock, the front vehicle will give you Show A, the cowboy scene, and the back vehicle will give you Show B, the gangster scene. Using this diagram, we'll show you how the ride would operate if both scenes were running in the same show. So, Vehicle A is riding along the track. It moves a bit quicker to get ahead of Vehicle B. It passes right through the underworld gangster scenes and parks in the Wild West bank section. All while Vehicle B slowly moves into place for the gangster shootout. Once Vehicle A's show is finished, it proceeds ahead and Vehicle B also proceeds ahead, eventually going through the Wild West, but it doesn't stop. Even when both shows are running, Show A typically only shows up in one or two of the five sets of vehicles through the queue. It was definitely considered the more rare show scene of the ride. Now, cast members would know which ride vehicle would be stopping for which scene, and if you wanted to see a particular one, you could just ask the cast member and they'd be able to seat you in the appropriate ride vehicle. Number 5. Imagineer Crew Members The first scene you pass through after your vehicle is taken over by the gangster or bandit is Alien, which is one of the larger show scenes on the ride. The Great Movie Ride took many Imagineers countless hours to construct, and the Alien scene pays homage to these Imagineers. On the left hand side, there's computer screens that list crew members who are missing. But these crew members are really just the Imagineers and the roles they played during the construction of the ride. It's hard to make out the names of these specific Imagineers, but you can make out the roles of Still Programming the Witch and Interior Detail Expert. It's a neat little detail added to the ride. Number 4. The Casablanca Airplane After passing through the jungle, hey Tarzan, you would approach Casablanca. In the scene, there's a full-size Lockheed Electra 12A airplane along with Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. When building and designing the Great Movie Ride, Disney was looking for that exact model of the plane since it's the model that's used in the film. Disney ended up finding this airplane in the ownership of a man from Hondo, Texas. Through the airplane serial number, they'd be surprised to learn that it was in fact used in films during the 1940s. 
But despite Disney's claims that this was the actual plane from Casablanca, it wasn't, since no real full-size Lockheed Electra aircraft was actually used in this scene of the film. Warner Wise, creator of Yesterland.com, has claimed that this plane Disney obtained could have been used for insert shots in the film, but not in the actual scene with Humphrey and Ingrid. That plane was a scaled-down model used on set. In the end, it created a good buzz though for the marketing of MGM Studios at the time. And when you ride by, you'll notice that only one half of the airplane was used on the great movie ride. So where's the other half? Well, it can be found on the Jungle Cruise at Magic Kingdom. Number 3. True to Scale The Great Movie Ride is home to over 50 audio animatronics that bring many famous actors to life. Each actor's animatronic on the ride was true to scale except for one, Humphrey Bogart. He was actually an inch shorter than Ingrid Bergman in real life, but you can see here that he's clearly taller than his female counterpart. In the film world, it's a common practice for actors to stand on raised platforms to appear taller, and that's what happened during the filming of Casablanca. The audio animatronic is taller than Humphrey Bogart was in real life, and is the only animatronic from the great movie ride that is not the actual height of the actor. And here's another little fun fact about this scene. Remember how we spoke before about Disney needing a license to use the actor's likeness? Well, they also needed a license to use the actor's voice. So in the Casablanca scene, Ingrid does not speak because her family would not give Disney the permission to use her voice. Number 2. It's a twister! As you leave Casablanca, you're faced with Sorcerer Mickey from Fantasia. But what a lot of people don't know was that this scene was supposed to be the twister scene from The Wizard of Oz. At the time, MGM had only given Disney the rights to use about three minutes of the film's audio. It included the Munchkin song, the Wicked Witch's dialogue, and a few lines of Dorothy discovering the Emerald City. This didn't include the additional tornado scene Disney wanted to use, and they weren't willing to pay more for these rights since building MGM Studios was happening on a very tight budget. The kicker of all this is that Disney had already built the tornado scene. You can see the tornado outline and how the Wizard of Oz scene would have fit in here perfectly. So, Imagineers went back to the archives of Disney films, found the scene from Fantasia, and shoehorned it into the already built set. Number 1. The First Animatronic The final big show scene in the great movie ride is the Wizard of Oz. At the time the ride opened in 1989, the Wicked Witch of the West animatronic was the most advanced audio animatronic built by Walt Disney Imagineering to date. It was the first A100 figure at any Disney park. It really is amazing how quickly and how lifelike the movements are in the figure. It could move much faster and stay more stable. It's a figure that has the most movement in the whole show. I think it has 17 body functions. The next A100 figure to be installed at Walt Disney World was Captain Jack Sparrow in the update and refurb of Pirates of the Caribbean. And Pirates of the Caribbean was one of the films represented in the finale montage of The Great Movie Ride. And just like that, the movie journey is over and a major Disney theme park chapter is closed. The Great Movie Ride will definitely be missed, but won't be forgotten. The new Mickey Ride is set to take place in the Chinese theater, so at least the facade of this beloved attraction, and who knows what else, should hopefully live on as a reminder of the once great attraction that was the Great Movie Ride. That's a wrap! So, which scene from the Great Movie Ride will you miss the most? And what's your opinion on Disney replacing the Great Movie Ride? Leave a comment below and start a conversation. If you have any videos from the Disney parks that you'd like to share with us to be used in future videos, follow the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching! Click the TPM icon on the screen to subscribe to this channel and check out some of these other videos which we're sure you'll like.